Listen carefully. Do not pretend that you are separate. This is why I commend this woman whom you have visited. Whether or not she is enlightened is not the point. She is at one with existence and existence is at one with her. In declaring yourself to be enlightened, an alchemy happens. You have expressed it, your absolute willingness to let go, to be at one with existence. And as soon as this willingness is present, multiple boundaries fall away. To declare oneself enlightened takes great courage. It takes great courage because you may be wrong. People may laugh and make fun of you, but let us not trouble ourselves too much with the semantics. To make this announcement, I am going to be absolutely, truly, and authentically myself. This is like an arrow to the core. In this space, tremendous space is created. In this space all dissolves that is not of your true nature. You have taken the responsibility to cut loose from the countless ways of the aimless personality. The axis is ready for those who want the axe. She has an axe ready to chop. All who are ready to be chopped all who are stinking ready. Yes, she is ready to do the chopping. It is rare to find a being who is female in the body ready to do the chopping. Usually, it was the man who had the task to do the chopping. Something is changing. The axe wielder of consciousness will have to be this woman. Because no man can wield an axe without creating damage unless he happens to be the master of the masters. Time is short. This beautiful fragrance is an example of a kind of an imperfect enlightenment. 
Enlightenment is not perfection. Enlightenment is absolutely daring to be oneself. Beautifully, without compromise. And the truly enlightened person cannot compromise one iota. This is the trouble with you elements of compromise remain. Cut them out, henceforth. I'm Maitreya, and I come originally from, from Norway. I, I came... We, we start a little bit on another plane, where we talk like this, where it's a little bit more funny and a little bit more, more childlike. Um, the whole thing started about two and a half years ago, when we were traveling in India, and we were, as many other people, we were trying to find ourselves in many different kinds of, kinds of uh, directions with healing and so on. And we've, we came to a, a deep yearning inside of us where we knew we can't go on further alone. We have to have a, a master, a master who could really show us who that we are, who can really give us another direction. And then we went to Nepal and we went trekking and came back from trekking and went to a bar and came into this bar and this bar was somehow magic. Somehow to magic. It was... It was a... energy around which we never felt before. And we looked over to a table and there was was sitting a, a woman, Anna Magdalena, in a long silver dress with some people and she was totally animating and she was alive, fiery, it was coming songs through her. It was a live theater. And we, we, we couldn't think, we just were pulled over there, it felt like... Uh, we were just pulled over there and with the question in our head, do you know how you can do astral traveling? That was the, the thing where my, my, somehow my head could ask a question. And she said, no, I don't know anything about astral traveling, but I know how to, to find yourself and to find inner peace. And Martin at that time could not think anymore. He was just a stunned and sat down and yes, couldn't think anymore. The same day. Same day. We were we were then in this bar for a long time and we were sitting together, singing together. The first day in the bar singing. Mm-hmm. We were about one, 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 as a one person was around, Anna Magdalena, a Buddha, we called him, a Canadian also. And just after that, we, we started the process, the life process together with Anna Magdalena. It, it was sure for this, this whole, whole being and this whole person knew from deep in our heart, this is the way.
It goes with this woman. I can't think anything more. It just goes down. But somehow, uh, 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 um, I can't tell, but you have been living with me two and a half years and we speak about this kind of questions. This is a question he would not even have. You understand? You start, you start creating problems and holding back and making problems uh, yeah, there are really uh, no reason why do you not enjoy your full blooming? You need to be and you need to feel a problem. Otherwise, something is no good. It's on Kein Probleme mehr schaffen, wenn es fügt, das ist total easy. We are just saying, through the sound and through the working with the sound, something fundamentally was changed. Mm -hmm. Learning how to sing again, learning how to, to be alive, to be spontaneous, to, be, to express myself without words, to get away from the words and get into the and the tones of the heart the tones of <laughs> the tones of fun the tones of heart not mental uh, tones of Ecstasy. Ecstasy. Tone, 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 tones of the heart. Ecstasy. Ecstasy. The tones of the heart. Ecstasy. E ecstasy. So how I met? Yeah. How India. I met? Hanali. I'll keep calling her Hanali because that's the name I'm, I'm most accustomed to. Hannah Magdalena, Mataji, all these names also belong to her. Um, I went to India because I was at that point in my life where I really felt um, a need to let go of a lot of things and in, in the process of doing that try to find myself. And. Um, I'd already been meditating for some time and whatnot, but I felt like India was where I needed to go for my next step, whatever that was going to be. And there was going to be a teacher there whose books I had read and been quite impressed by, named Andrew Cohen. 
So I went there basically to meet him and see what would unfold from there. And I met him and it was really quite impressive um, for me at the time. And so after I met him, I just rented a room in Rishikesh and I was pretty much just meditating and doing my practice. And that's what all I was doing at that time for a month or two. And then one day I was at the local restaurant and there's this lady who was uh, you know, quite a powerful, charismatic presence in the restaurant. Like, really loud and flamboyant and really um, confident and she would sing and she'd just be really really alive and it drew me because on my journey I've always sort of felt that truth if I'm going to find it has two poles I've always sort of had this intuition that whatever it is that I'm looking for part of it has to be found within stillness and hence the meditation practice the other half I felt like was coming into a full embracing of life and a full um, a full power of living to be fully engaged in the world in 110 percent and uh, I felt like that was the part of me that um, at that time really sort of needed to needed work okay. I felt like somehow I'd let go of the world a little bit much and it was time to come back and so and I, here I met someone who sort of embodied that aspect the life part because she was really really full power. And so, I, so I went and started talking to her and and um, you know she had her tarot cards and she'd pull cards and sort of like read into my soul and almost like tell me all this stuff about myself that I didn't really know anyone could know almost. It's really quite impressive the way she can do that. And so I started seeing her, you know I'd sort of see her every day for a few days. I started spending more and more time and at that time she was just with one young Indian boy who was kind, kind of her, sort of served her a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's sort of how it all began. Everything sort of unfolded from there. Pretty soon drama started to unfold because because I was involved with Andrew Cohen I had met a bunch of his students and disciples and there's an Andrew Cohen center there in Rishikesh and that had sort of become my circle for a while and when they all started seeing that I was hanging out with this crazy lady they became very um, concerned and judgmental and whatnot and they kind of said you're making a big mistake man like you're letting go of something that's really true and you're going on a big deluded trip and I said well I don't think so I just want to go with this like I'm not gonna be afraid I want to see where it's gonna lead like maybe she's not everything she says she is but hey like why not like take this ride and, and check it out and uh, what, anyways they what, weren't into that what did she say she was well she says she's one with existence she says she's there's no I there and so somehow the universe just flows through her and plays her like a puppet. And so it's like she's fully enlightened. She's like the the next big, big thing on, on this earth as far as consciousness is concerned. Like she's the next Buddha. And you felt that as well? Uh, I felt like there was a lot there. Um, I wasn't 100% sure that this was the real thing. And I think that's that's partly why I was, why, why I eventually left because I wouldn't, see that a hundred percent because I wasn't sure I was still waiting just waiting and seeing you know sort of holding back a little bit to see okay let's let's uh, let's find out and she knew that that I, I was there um, and she seemed okay with it most of the time It came to pass that Mother Earth looked on as a multitude of whales beached themselves before her. Outside the cool womb of the ocean, a whale's body temperature will rapidly rise, resulting in death within hours. Mother Earth beseeched one of the whales why it wished to leave this world, to which the whale replied, we whales are a singing race. 
we wander the oceans in a state of resonance or attunement with the biotic tone of the earth. The earth creates its own music. We have but to look inside ourselves to recognize its melodies. We sing of life, love and a mystery that extends beyond words and beyond the ocean's vastness. We sing in tune with the natural frequency of the planet, the natural electromagnetic matrix in which all life forms evolved and until recent decades the dominant tone in which all life took place. As a result of the great cities of man and the industry that sustains them, the earth's frequency has risen dramatically, overlaying or drowning out the natural pulse of the earth with an intrusive synthetic throbbing. This electromagnetic pollution poisons our music and lulls the race of man into a rhythmic slumber. Unless the tone of the earth is healed, we whales will leave this world, our songs never to grace the oceans again. As it comes all, the whole mystery life comes out of the Ashna in the center. From the light into all rainbow colors, all the spells in rainbow colors. And the complete background now, it's dark, bluish, violet uh, universe. <laughs> yes. Whatever is your focus, focus is one part. It's using the mind, but you need the emotion to start the engine that you can manifest. Most definitely, it's And there we were, then we were in Nepal and uh, went to Pokhara and Kathmandu and we were in Nepal, we you know, met some people, had some confrontations, uh, had some people join the group and then leave the group, one of them in fear, big fear, probably scarred. And uh, yeah, and then uh, we met Shambhava, which is that Maitreya. We met him in Nepal. We were probably in Nepal, I don't know, a month and a half, two months. And we went back to India. And um, one thing led to another. Met a couple other people when we went back to Rishikesh, and they were with us for, they were involved in this story for quite a while. Can I back it up to, um, you said you met some people, they joined and left. And one left in fear. Um, Canadian girl. Canadian girl. A nurse, a nurse from the Northwest Territories. She, uh... She was hanging out with us for a while. Maybe it was only like two weeks, maybe. Somehow Hanali grabbed this girl and scratched her arms with her fingernails. And this freaked her right out. She's like, geez, because this is assault, right? And um, she's like, I'm, I'm so out of here. I, I want to leave. And she's like, wanted to get out of the door. And, um, and Hanali would grab her and like wouldn't let her out the door and then locked her in. And then she's like getting all claustrophobic and freaking out that she's being locked in with this mad woman in the room. And, and this sort of drama went on for a little while, and then... How did that make you feel? Oh, it's, it's, 
I, I've had several times that I've been with people and they've had like intense confrontations with her and usually it tears me up inside to see because usually it seems like it goes too far or it's going to cause damage like there's there's a point in, in pushing and challenging people but there's also a point when you have to know when to back off and that's the thing she doesn't know she doesn't have that subtlety um, she doesn't know when when's enough and when's enough is enough and uh, and yet you still you still stayed with her even after witnessing that yeah I did you know like it, it shook my it shook me it shook my confidence in her there are several things like this of other people too and which we might come to and whenever these kind of things would happen I, I go through a big period of like questioning and I sort of confront her the next day and be like listen like you have to explain what's going on here because this doesn't seem like enlightenment to me this seems like you know craziness and um, and then she sort of tried to rationalize it and explain it. And that was sort of when I liked her best, when she was like the wise woman, because I'm kind of a mental sort of person and I want to know the truth. I don't want delusions and I want someone to explain what's going on. And so she played that role and, and that was pretty cool. And basically here's how I sort of dealt with it. Because I was looking to accept the universe in its totality. I was looking to say yes to everything that exists and to like be open and in love with all that is. And so it seemed like what my job was is if I could like keep letting go every time some aversion to her would come up, I could just keep dropping it, dropping it, dropping it. She keep bringing up like bad sensations and like dislike. If I could let it go and let it go and let it go and still love her and still love her and still see the beauty in her and still see like the brilliance in her all the time. Maybe through that, it could be a doorway into like, if I can love this most unlovable thing fully, truly, like in my deepest soul, then maybe I can love everything that fully and that truly. So that's kind of how I sort of tried to see how I was playing the game. And did you feel that occurring? Um, I suppose on some level, you know, but not fully because I always still react when she was harsh with people. I still feel bad, um, you know. I think that love, I think that love is already there and maybe it's become stronger through spending time with her, I don't know. And it's not always there, like there's lots of things in the world that um, revolt me and, and actually in some ways I, I think that maybe that ideal I had before was a, was a mistake because from the cosmic perspective it's true. From the cosmic perspective everything's perfect, perfect, perfect because it's all just happening as it is. You know. We are, we are beings and there's problems, like there's pollution and there's people hungry and there's people in pain and I can't love it, you know? I can sort of like accept it on some deep level and go, yeah, okay, ultimately it's all happening as it should be, but, you know, I think we could give up a part of our humanity if we are willing to, or, yeah, I don't even know if it's possible or not, but maybe it is. Nothing. <laughs> Thought you were gonna say that. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. You understand my, my, my frustration of like trying to, to This frustration is exactly the same frustration with <laughs> You know Which we we which we feel when we look at Sananda <laughs> and Venus when they are having so so beautiful with each other. There is absolutely no difference. It's just a matter of realizing. to go 100%, then you get 100%. There's no 50%. There's no. And long it was a physical and a mental 100%. But not a, but not a heart 100%.
can you understand the difference? It was the complete willingness, it was the going for it, whatever it was. Going, going for every task, doing everything. But not completely integrating it. And that's the miracle which Sananda has done. Taking that responsibility, taking the responsibility of our, of our force, of our energy, and saying, I take responsibility for myself and for my energy, and I go in the direction of love. And I do everything for the case of healing, for the, the big, what shall we say, awakening. And not following and doing what Hannah Magdalena says, but feeling this Hannah Magdalena in yourself and following this inner, this Maitreya in me. And then we all went up into the mountains together um, to the Parvati Valley. And when we were up there, that's where we met Gayan. Hanali and Gayan would be like the two, once they really, well, especially once he started really like letting letting go of himself and just like merging his will with hers. He had to give up a lot because he, he had a strong personality. Um, now he's given it up, you know. Now he thinks he's obeying um, his true self within him, but he's interiorized her, her ego. So he obeys her ego within him now. So he's given up himself, you know. And but in in giving up yourself, you find a liberation because you let go, and so no wonder it's ecstatic, and that's cool. And if you're ecstatic, you're ecstatic. Hey, there's not really, not much that can be said against it, like you were saying before. Ja, der ist jetzt schon in Spanien. Und dann ist die Nachricht von jetzt, vielleicht kommt von Spanien, oder? Nein. Ja. Okay. Da ist jemand. Wenn wir einen Treffen haben. Der ist zusammen, der Dienstag, ist gerade hier. Das ist der Grund. Ja. Ja, genau. Wenn wir alle die Station, 6. Dezember, Geburtstag, im Hotel Victoria, warte, bis das Hotel kommt. Ich kann nicht so recht, ich bin nicht wundern, ich habe die Polizei hier. Wir haben eins gesungen, weißt, im Parkhotel hier in Marigold oben, und der Herr Direktor hat dann gefunden, dass es störend Gäste und hat gemeint, wir sollen jetzt sofort gehen, sonst kommt die Polizei. Der Direktor ist ein Deutscher, und der Deutsche hat dann das in Tat umgesetzt, ne? und der Schweizer Polizist ist dann gekommen, und er konnte sich kaum das Lachen. <lacht> 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 Ja, und jetzt ist es vor, ich rede schon nicht viel vor an. Vor allem mit einem absoluten Meister von der Meister. Qualität. Absolut super. Zweieinhalb Jahre lang geprüft, jeden Tag. Und der absolut widerlichste Kerl, den du dir vorstellen hat eine Masse auf dem gleichen Grad wie ich. Ein total widerlichste Kerl, den du dir kannst vorstellen kannst, bei den Sachen. Das haben wir. Frieden auf Erden. Mach's mit Mach's. Amen. Hey, wir geleistet. Kannst du dir vorstellen, was das für ein Kind ist? Nicht das Kaliber. Sie sieht's nicht. Sie sieht's nicht, gell? Sie bringt mich auch nicht mehr mit der Kleine. Sie sieht mich nicht und uns nicht und sie glaubt uns auch nicht. Glaubst du nicht. Aber es macht nichts, es klingelt dann nachher weiter und hörst es dann aus der Zeit. Und kannst spüren, dass wir wahr sind. Heilig war. Ganz heilig.
du hast heilige Blüte gelegt. Warum meinst du, dass sie jetzt aufgestanden ist und aufgestanden Das ist ein spannender Punkt. Was machst du denn hier bei dir noch? Aber jetzt, okay, jetzt. Wir haben uns hm. vorbereitet zum Tisch. Reine Leute. Ich wollte nur reinste die Leute vorzeigen, an ihren Brüsten, so die wir kennen. Also haben wir zuerst unseren Stall ausgeputzt. Und wenn wir erscheinen, kommen wir super. Und wenn wir erscheinen, kommen wir super. Und sind alle mächtig auf dieser Erde. Weil jetzt ist allerhöchste Zeit, weißt du warum? Was bringt es, haben wir hier so Palmen und Kali auf Palmen und die Mehrdermutter auf Palmen, dass sie sagt, jetzt stehe ich aber alle auf. Weil die Leute hinter mir haben erstens und zweitens, weil etwas passiert ist auf der Erde. Was bringt es, haben wir Was bringt die so auf Palmen, dass das der Lehrer da anholt? Dass das passieren lässt im Hotel Victoria, dass das Licht kommt, alles, was passiert da, 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 was ist passiert? Was sind die schlimmsten Nachrichten in den letzten drei Wochen? Konstant jeden Tag. Was ist das Schlimmste? Ich habe nicht viele Nachrichten. Ich erinnere mich an die Nacht auf dem Schiff. Hat die Warnung auf dem Schiff, wo ich am Sterben war. Das bin ich halt verwandt. Ja, jetzt ist es dumm, jetzt ist es gut jetzt. Äh, ja. Mädchen, ich warne dich. Ich warne dich. Und dann mal jetzt mal heiligen Ernst. Ja, du hast deine Flamme aufgehört. Ich liegt mit dem Hut. Mit mir lässt man nicht passen. Du liegst mich nicht an. Ich lasse mich nicht anliegen. Wunderbar. Ich wünsche euch allen Gottes Segen. Und das ist euch Hannah, wir sind Gott. Gott. Und, das und wir wünschen dir, gern. dass du verschwindest. Ein solches Schmeiß gehört nicht auf die Erde. Ein Sonnenmissbrauch, wie dir da betrieben, in meinem Haus, rein, wo für mich gekauft worden ist, das lässt Mutter Erde nicht mehr länger zu und fällt der Mutter noch weniger. Die verschwindet, sagt Kali. Sollte wie du verschwindet von der Erdoberfläche. Habe gesprochen. Amen. Ciao, ciao und ich wünsche dir Gottes Segen und Frieden. Wir sehen uns im Himmel wieder. Ich weiß, dass wir uns wieder kennt. Ich weiß. Und er versteht mir jetzt. Ja, komm. Danke, 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 danke. Once upon a time, Mataji, while on her morning walk, came across an old sadhu meditating under a tree. In the pursuit of cosmic consciousness, a sadhu must die unto himself, cutting all family ties and renouncing all material attachments. Since time immemorial, Indian society has been organized to support these holy men. The old sadhu had no possessions save for a short wooden stick used to fend off India's many rabbit dogs. The grain of the wood was beautifully sanded and varnished. 
from decades of gentle human oils and continuous physical contact. Despite his most strenuous efforts and extreme austerities, the sadhu remained in the mortal world, bound to samsara, the endless cycle of rebirths. Mataji beheld the protective manner in which the mendicant cradled his one remaining possession. She then revealed to the monk the essence of his attachment and why he was prevented from taking the final step towards the ultimate. It was the humble piece of wood that bound him to the mortal world like the amassed material possessions of a lifetime. The old sadhu felt the truth in her words and surrendered his one remaining possession. With great reverence, Mataji accepted the priceless human artifact and continued on with her morning walk. The sadhu continued on with his search for enlightenment, with the sadness that accompanies the loss of anything one grows accustomed to, but with a revived determination to achieve the highest possible goal, to be at one with existence. I, I speak I speak of the place where I, I until now have come to know my my true self at the most. That was in Andaman Islands. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. How long you were there and mm -hmm. Well we were we were in Humpy and we were in a process of um, dying, you could say. And um, we were in a process saying all the circumstances around are saying no to us. Nobody wants our songs, nobody wants our presence, nobody nobody wants anything from us. And then we, we find, okay, when that so is, then we, it's a signal that it's time that we go. Time that we solve ourselves into light. I don't know how to put it different. Anyway, we thought, and with the idea, the world is going under. There's, there's nothing more here we can do. But when we have a little bit of time left on the earth, let's celebrate that in the most beautiful place where we can imagine. And Hanna Magdalena had the thousand Swiss francs in there. Hello, hello. Hello. That's good. Thousand francs in her, in her pocket and said, these are to be used. Let's go somewhere. And then we went to Andaman Islands. There, and and this, they're quite close to to Indonesia, and it's a tropical, fantastic paradise with so many living beings and so so pure, so so natural. The complete paradise, really complete paradise. And there we had a re, a, a gigantic bungalow. And we were the only one in a, re in a in a big resort, and there we could have our live our theater show completely. There, the theater theater man and this this being came out and started uh, many different roles to play. It, it was a we we allowed ourselves to express our multi-dimensionality where suddenly I'm furious and uh, very angry or uh, I play a little child and, and do the little role of, do the same role in, in different ages or, or um, play the, the bad man or the, the, the woman or we were, we were, there was a restaurant there and every day we went completely different. We played a different role and and there were a couple of Indians there and there were no tourists. We could really play our game. We could play we could play 
sometimes retarded children, or or we could be man and woman, or we could sing a song, or... And no one from Norway watching. Exactly. Exactly. Completely free. And in Andaman Islands, after dealing with all fears, and dealing with the fact that the world is going under and all the fears that were coming up in, in relation to that theme. And after dealing with all these fears and getting in contact with this monk or this retarded mongol like this, which has a big heart and no mind, we came also to know Maitreya. The true master, the true, the true being in me. You can imagine Maitreya is about 15 years old. It's about, it's, it's very intelligent, very, feels a lot. You have to remember. Where did you get? Where did the name come from? The name come from Anna Magdalena. It means the the, the companion, the, the friend, and also compassion. It's the name. And we know Maitreya as pure love, as gigantic heart and all the love and all the possibility to give and give and give. Mm. Flowing. Freedom. In totality? In, in totality. God. God child. Strong word. No. God child. And then, okay, so then this, then this mission happened. Um, Gayan has this big old um, camperized uh, bus in, in India that he drove over years ago with a bunch of friends. They drove from Europe to India in this uh, big old Mercedes bus. And uh, they paid the taxes and brought it in, never to leave. And it's still in India and it still works. And when we met him, he had his bus, he has his teepee, and he was living out of his bus and doing his trip in India. He lives there, he, he still sold leather work. And, Anyways, it was parked in Kajaraho because when they went to Switzerland, they wanted to dump it somewhere for the monsoon and then come back. And so we were all sent on a mission to go to Kajaraho and get the bus and drive it back. And uh, she was going to re reunite with us in Goa or Pune, I forget what the plan was, but probably Goa. And uh, she didn't want to do the, the big bus trip or the train trip across India and everything. And so Katie and I went with um, Gayan and this other guy Prem, this Indian fellow we met, and then we uh, we talked this young Iranian boy into coming. He was going to school, but he really sort of fell in love with Gayan and with myself and with Ronnie and Katie. And uh, anyway, so he decided he'd go on this adventure with us and see what would happen. And uh, so we traveled on the bus and went to the ashram where, where her ashram is, and we hung out there for maybe ten days. And while we were there, then some. This is when some of the other people from other countries started to come in. An old friend of um, Guyon's came, um, tattoo artist. And, oh yeah, and then Shambhava came back, my, my Atreya, he came back from Norway at that time. Um, this woman from Italy came, an old friend of Guyon's. And uh, I guess at this point, there's about 10 of us or so. The one from Israel. Oh yeah, and this young fellow from Israel, who we met him just before we left India, like a day or so before we left India, we just met him like in the forest. And like he was just like so blown away that he just like came back to India to like see what this whole thing was about. And so we're hanging out at the ashram, swimming, playing energy game, whatever, having a really good time. And then we left and then we drove across India in this big old bus. And we were um, really, this was like probably 10 of the most magical days of my life. Um, I've always sort of been searching for community and like togetherness and you know, in our travels we visited a lot of in communes and intentional communities and things like this where people have that kind of an ideal of seeing the beauty and the richness in, in, in another and like sharing those gifts that we all have that are different. 
And this was really sort of happening on this trip. Like, we drive across and we eat in big dabas, roadside dabas, and every night we just pull the bus into the jungle and like camp out and sleep on the ground, get up the next day, take off, and we were breaking down all the way across India and like we put a big mattress on the roof of the bus and we could all like lay on the bus while we were driving down the highway and just like watch the world go by and watch India float by. And everywhere we'd go, like they had seen people like driving through and there'd be like a hundred people swarmed around the entrance of the bus trying to look in the window because it was just, like a neat thing for them and and uh, but every night like we'd be hanging out and singing around the fire, we'd make a fire in the jungle. And it seemed like people were becoming free in some way, like people were letting go of fear. And every night, the least confident of us would become more confident. And people would be more daring and more uh, charismatic in, in their own way and in sharing their gifts and realizing that they were seen and appreciated and loved. And you sort of could feel this melting happening where people were just like letting go of all their fear. And it was really beautiful to see. And um, it's like this transformation, really high time. Yeah, so then we drove across India. It took about 10 days. And uh, we ended up in Goa. And, um, and then a whole other chapter unfolded. <laughs> just sees the situation right now where Gayan Sananda was in complete resistance. It, it was a very hard moment, tough moment. And Maitreya challenged him in playing an energy game. Energy game is just a game where you see if you are in mind or in, in center. It's a very excellent game to see, to, to experience to be in center. And we were playing this game and, and Gayan was completely in, in mind. And Maitreya was in completely complete harmony. He was he was playing and seeing how Gayan was getting more and more angry that Maitreya was so calm. And we were standing in a beautiful, beautiful forest and Gayan was so angry at one point that, because he realized he cannot somehow trigger Maitreya into getting away from this god child. It, it was so, it is so sure. So, in the moment, just here, feeling what's there and not the mind who tries to create the problem or And it all came out of... Well, Mango came out of a complete fear attack. This, this being was allowed to experience itself in, in a fear attack where it looked into the mirror and saw itself and it saw a completely mad person. A person which it does not know, uh, uh, ready for the madhouse, completely, uh, completely mad. 
and could just see this face and could laugh about it. And after that, being able to laugh about it, the mango in me, the, the child, shall I say, without limits, but still retarded, came out. And it was the, the core, somehow, it hit my core. So Goa. Okay, well we got to Goa and our energy was high. Like we were all so excited. Like, cause we all could feel what was going on. It was really weird too. Like we wouldn't really talk about it so much, but it's like, we could feel that there was this transformation happening and people were coming out, like coming out of their shells. And um, so we got to India, we were all just like in the highest spirits and excited for what was gonna come. Cause now we're gonna get together with, with Hanali again. And she's like a director of energy. Like she's like really powerful person to have in a circle. And ever since I've known Hanali, here's been one of the things. Whenever she'd be really harsh with people and really like cutting them down and whatnot, I'd always be like, geez, you know, why like this? This doesn't seem right to me, like we were talking about before. And she would tell me that um, in my deepest heart, you know, I'm, I'm a child, I'm a six year old child, I'm Hanali. And all that I really want to do is I just want to sit back and enjoy. I just want to sit back and not have to play the ogress anymore and not be the mean Kali kicking people's asses and trying to get them out of their egos. I just want to sit back and enjoy everyone in harmony and togetherness and, and freedom. And just, the only reason I'm being the ogress sometimes is because it's needed. It's a needed thing right now and it hurts me to do it, hurts other people to do it. But like at some point when you guys all like get it and get out of your egos, then it's all going to flow naturally and I can just sit back and be, be loving Hanali and whatnot. And I'm like, cool, that sounds good to me because I don't like being around ogres so much. But maybe sometimes it's needed, I can, I'll go with that. You know, maybe sometimes I don't quite even see it in the time. Maybe it seems a little bit much. But maybe I'm not seeing the big picture. Like, I'm not infallible. It might just be my, my judgment that's off. And so, so this is her deepest yearning, she tells me. And so cool, cool. So we're at the beach and guess what? Her deepest yearning had come true in some way. Like it's the closest that it had ever been like in the whole time I've been with her and it all been when she was gone. And so now she should be able to come and see it and like recognize it and um, love it and be like, wow, what's happened here? This is so great. But it wasn't like that. It's not how it unfolded. And and then, so we'd get together around the, camp, the fire and friends would tell friends and sometimes there'd be 10 of us, sometimes there'd be 15 of us, sometimes there'd be 20 of us. People sort of on the fringes sort of checking out what's going on here. But everyone thought it was pretty interesting, you know, like there's a lot of uh, a lot of growth and a lot of challenging and stuff happening. Sort of falling back into the old pattern where she's sort of the director of the energy. You're like, okay, yeah, you. Now you sing or whatever, right? Or you like play this kind of energy to him, like, oh, he's off, so you tell him like what he's doing. And so it's kind of liberating for people who are a little introverted because it forces you to come out. And like you, it's like, oh, well, I better just, I might as well just do it, right? Because I'm kind of commanded to. And uh, so it's great for someone who's wanting to come out to sort of be put on in acting school. It's kind of an acting school in a sense, you know, learning to like lose the inhibitions. Um, and I thought it was cool. Like, I love those evenings. I love the challenges. I'd love to see who's going to get put on the hot seat that night because it's intense and you don't get intensity like that in most, most parts of life. Uh, everyone's too afraid to hurt, hurt each other's feelings and whatnot. She's not, like, she'll kick your ass. And so, 
this would happen night after night. And, and then there'd be an interesting thing. The young Iranian boy, Arya, and this young Indian fellow, Devananda, who had been um, the caretaker of her ashram during the time that she was away from it. Um, if there's a pure representation of bhakti in the world, it's him. Bhakti being like the love of the devotion, like the pure love and devotion kind of energy. Not intellectual, um, none of this. And just he'll serve and love because he sees something. And he sees something in, in Hanali, and so he's been willing to like even just be away from her, but just to serve her made his, made his life complete. Really simple, but really pure-hearted. More pure-hearted. Like what him and Arya, the, the little boy and the simple Indian, were the most pure-hearted out of any of us. And uh, the most sensitive to energy, I guess, or to, to, to mood, to, to group feeling. And uh, I didn't really notice necessarily that the, the high point of the trip had sort of faded off. But both of these guys separately had come up to me and been like, you know, Buddha, you know. Um, I don't like this anymore. Something's wrong, something's different. And it's not the way it used to be on the bus. And I would have been like, well, you know, it's different, but it's still really good. You know, just flow with it and let's see what's going to happen here. And this sort of happened for a few days. And then uh, eventually I saw what they were talking about, but it took a while. They, they got away before I did. My question, if you were to be separated from that, you don't have a group. This group? Yes. You must imagine two and a half years we've so much focused on our unity. So living in sharing everything and only in our own process, being so unattached from the world and being able to see the world from a different point of view. Then now going out in the community and being alone, away from that, would be hell. They stayed. Yeah, I don't know, you know? I mean, obviously they felt the, the magic on the bus trip as well, but uh, I don't know, initially they had a stronger tie to her. Mm -hmm. They gave themselves more fully? More fully than the rest of us, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we'd ask them afterwards, like, yeah, but what about that on the bus? Because they, they felt it too, and, and they're they like, did. yeah. And then it was sort of a sad thing, you know, I think especially for for Guy and I felt like it was a sad thing, like sort of knowing what we had on the bus, but at the same time saying, you know what, you know, that doesn't matter because she's it and I have to go with her. I just felt like I'd learned what I was going to learn from that scene and it was an amazing scene and uh, it's too bad I had to end like the way it did, but it, it did. <laughs> And like, you know, there's, there's the details of, of how it all unfolded and whatnot. But when we all did say, finally, enough's enough, she's like, oh yeah, okay, all you guys, it's like you're possessed or deluded or something. Like, why don't you guys go down to the, to the beach and play anger game? I don't know if you know about anger game, but it's one of her tools. Um, if people are like off in some, in some way, like they're not totally in tune with her, she thinks they have to release anger, some kind of therapy. Let's so you go down and you, pretend you're really angry with each other and you just yell and you rah and you try to channel that energy to release it. It's sort of a cathartic hypothesis, you know. So we went down to the beach and we're all so happy. <laughs> like everyone like somehow felt liberated, like a big weight had come off of them. And none of us really knew that a weight was on us. But all of a sudden like oh, felt like the whole universe is wide open and uh, and that this was the exact right thing to do. And it was, none of us ended up going back with her. And shortly afterwards, you know, they left for Hampi and Andaman Islands and Switzerland. And I tell you how this awakened for its own realization. We were on a boat in Turkey and I hadn't read 
a book for a long, 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 long time. And on that boat, somebody gave me the book of Vivekananda Jnana Yoga. And I start reading. And I read there something like God, as you imagine it, does not exist. God is in everything your eyes can see. And I... <laughs> and in this moment, a wow! big explosion. <laughs> and after a while, I, I open my eyes. And the glass in front of me was not there anymore. But the whole boat full of sand like glass. We had a few hours to clean it. That thought God is in everything, is an energy that is in everything. Reminded this system of who it is and let it explode that class. This is the power that is living here through and in me. And this is the power that lets now with this consciousness that my, was my awakening with the class. Now my imagination is big enough, but my trust and strength and experience is big enough that this changes everything to move into this. All is needed is you are with me in tune. We say we are remember. We we put a, an example there, here, on on the planet. How true godly beings live. How how God interacts with Himself. And if people remember that and keep focusing on that, they remember who they are. That that was the game. Who that that. Um, started with Hanna Magdalena. Hanna Magdalena is God, shall we say, godly energy in the human body. No I anymore, it's just pure flow, Mother Nature, like a, like a, like an animal of, in an art, in a way. No personal thinking, just p pure flow. And we allow ourselves to see our to see our godliness in her so that we can integrate it and liberate our, ourselves and so that we again become this example and we can give it on to the next one so that this one can become this example and so God, this process goes on from hand to hand I take responsibility for myself and for my energy and I go in the direction of love and I do everything for the case of healing for the, the big, what shall we say, awakening.
Amen. Yeah. 